And streaming this dev? I am streaming this. Okay, maybe yes. I'll just host you then. Maybe that's what I'll do. Go for it, my man. All right, let's see here. Can you, do you mind uh, in the like? How can I? Yeah, I, I'll look at you. I'll look at you. Send me the link or something. Hello, we 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 are live. I did this poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. This, we're as professional as always. <laughs> Yes. Episode 13. We finally got him. We finally got the man on. I'm excited about this. One of my favorite streamers. <laughs> space, Captain Space. You are too kind, my friend. You Welcome on in. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you guys being like being willing to see me and talk with me and stuff. It's really cool of you. Yeah, it's great. And as, as you guys can see, we're not in his usual part of the spaceship. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> we're yep. in the, uh, the engine room. <laughs> If that's working right <laughs> there, yeah, we're in the engine. This is this is what what like the server room. This will be yeah, the, the server this room. The, this is the server room where we gather all data about all possible outcomes of the near future and yeah. the hyperspace jumps that may occur or may not occur. And it's too bad it doesn't data. know whether or not your Twitch is gonna work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I see that I've got this this weird fuzzball here that quantum is <clears> in. It's my quantum fuzzball. It it it's sometimes exists and sometimes space doesn't. Space dice. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> space, fuzzy dice. <laughs> yeah. Fuzzy space dice for the win. How are you tonight, space? I'm feeling really good, dude. I really appreciate you asking. Thank you very much. I'm feeling upbeat. I had a really busy weekend, uh, but it was a really good weekend. Had some family in town and stuff. It was really good. It was positive. I'm, you're, I'm feeling upbeat, yeah. You're it was kind of the, the thing I needed. Yeah, dude, life is so complicated. <laughs> like, hey. I thought life was busy before, but it just keeps spooling up, you know? And the more stuff you try to do, the more busy it becomes. Oh, so yeah. It's just the way yeah. it is. Like I, I, like I don't even have a, I don't have a, I don't even have a kid yet, and I'm like, oh my god, I dread the day where I finally have one. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I, I, I mean, I, no time as it is now. Cause say, oh, bro, yeah. I'm it's pretty true. sure like, that it's infinitely more complicated when you're suddenly in charge of the of maintaining the life of little creatures that have no ability to do it themselves. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's the best thing in the world. It really is. It like, it's cool because it's like you. You get to have this experience where your heart is on the outside of your body, right? Where you like, um, like suddenly there's a there's like a mental health element to it where you can lose your mind in the stress of it. But but in reality, I think it's important to like, I think having kids does this thing where you lose amount an amount of self worship that goes on. You know, where like you're hyper obsessed about you and what's going on with you and what's happening for you and whether or not things are going your way and this and that. And all of a sudden now you're like forced to be selfless yeah. <laughs> and it's like it's like a skill that a lot of people you know hopefully learn hopefully they pick it up from that, i think some people that, just you know? don't know how to do it and it's, it's fine as long as you know before you have one right yeah no, right you know your limits right know your limits yeah. that's that's for, that's very very important but sorry yeah. dev what were you trying to say yeah sorry bro i don't remember what i was trying to say <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll just uh we'll just we'll just get into it i guess then <laughs> so you go by space captain space what made you go with that? Are you like a big sci-fi fan, or just want something uh, different? Indeed, I am. I am a huge. So I'm a. I'm, man. I'm a fan of all the fandoms, basically. Like I'm a fantasy fan. I'm a sci-fi fan. I'm a paranormal fan. I like all of that stuff. But um, I think when it came down to like choosing a name, I wanted something that would. Uh, I don't know. Like I, I liked the idea of creating, and I'm still kind of working on getting this done. But I want to create a prof, like an an an, an identity, of like this. Um, galactic space traveler who's constantly on adventures, who like in his downtime streams for fun, kind of that's, a thing. That's you know? a great idea. Yeah. I like, actually I had like this that. Idea originally, where like, you know, like you know, different. I'd create different backgrounds where I'm like hiding inside a ventilation shaft of an alien ship, like streaming while I wait for them to jump into hyperspace. <laughs> Just random crap like that, you know. And and uh, um, I was really inspired by uh, the spaceman Spiff. Uh, character from Calvin and Hobbes. Did you oh, ever read any Calvin and Hobbes comics? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Calvin has this alter ego called Spaceman Spiff who lives in his imagination that's always crash landing on random alien environments and planets and getting into adventures and he's always inside his head and over over narrating every little thing, you know. And uh, I wanted something that was kind of like reminiscent of that where it's like, um, you know, just random crazy space adventures. And so yeah, and uh, that's where, like, the, um, I found a whole bunch of um, uh, royalty-free, like, uh, what's the public domain uh, right. old sci-fi movies. 
and I just break them into pieces. So all of my YouTube videos and stuff, I try to start with like some the craziest scene I can find in a yeah. in a sci-fi in an old sci-fi movie or something. You, you know, you seem and to be able to with that. Like even your raid, even mm -hmm. your raid clip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that, man. That's why, yeah, so that's, that's kind of honestly one, that's one of the reasons why I, I I always loved your channel because like I I don't even know how to even get around to even doing that. <laughs> no idea. It's fun. Yeah, I have a background in like uh, video production and stuff, and so it's always just kind of like fun for me to just like find random stuff and try to turn it into things, you know. So like, like take the movie Alien or Aliens, and uh, or like um, uh, oh, what's the name of that one um, that I'm always pulling from? I can't believe. Oh, like Starship Troopers or something, you know? Oh like, God! And you get yeah, those propaganda videos, and it's so easy to just cut them, you know? Like you cut them into something yeah. that you that you want or that you can use and just try that. So that was the idea about around um, Space Captain Space was hmm. this, it's a persona that I can I like, might I might off, have to talk you know? to you at some point. <laughs> yeah, about yeah, because yeah. you yeah. just you just gave me an idea. <laughs> Perfect man, yeah. So you can you know the thing of I, I think that's like my advice. And granted I am by no means a, a professional streamer of any kind. Um, but like uh, the thing that I tend to enjoy most from the people that I watch on Twitch, uh, is um, number one, they they, they they have a very clear identity, right? Like they know who they are, they know what they're about. Um, a lot of times they adopt a persona. You know, like I like this guy named Cobra. He's just super lighthearted and fun, and, and he just uh, he adopts this like bro kind of like whoa, this is just super fun kind of persona. You know, then there's the uh, the quintessential, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say his name on Twitch anymore, but you know, like the Dr. Disrespect or the, the Sheriff Eli or the, um, you know, they get these, these, or I mean, you know, still good you know any, then, any VTuber. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's <laughs> you, adopt, you adopt a persona. Just, you just saying. Abandon your own, you know, your own insecure self. And exactly. Kind of lean into this identity or this, this theme. Lean. Which kind of pushes you through it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Lean. <laughs> yeah. so that's kind of what i wanted to do i wanted to create a persona that i could that i could adopt and then kind of just abandon my my insecure normal self behind and just kind of roll with like oh yeah you know today we you know ran into a patrol of galaxians around 17 prime you know and that'd be and, so uh, you know, great i, I yeah, hope you, you get know, around you just doing that for your it. streams yeah Oh, I mean, maybe if we, maybe if you're a big time uh, developer, you'll have, you'll be able to do that. Yeah, hopefully, with a little more free time on my hands, right? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Yeti? How are you doing? Hey, Yeti. Uh, so, well, how about we get into a little bit of your background then? So, what what oh, got yeah. you into gaming? What's your like earliest gaming memory? Oh man. You're probably you're probably around <sighs> Deb's age at least. So yeah. Like um, way back. <laughs> so. Uh, think about what came first um the chicken or the egg uh really well that's the thing is like i think the very first um my very first gaming memories are of the original uh nintendo entertainment system right um yeah by some weird miracle uh my family bought one for christmas which is really weird because um you know like it just was it's really kind of out of the ordinary of like what my family's into like i come from i come from um like my parents, my dad is very, um, very outdoorsman. -y. He's he's an outdoorsman. He he likes, you know, off roading in his in his four wheel drive vehicle. He likes hunting. He likes um, all of that kind of stuff. And so I was raised doing that stuff too, which is great. Um, and then my mom is like a big sports fan. She's always like watching football games and stuff, which is this weird. Anyway, that's a weird thing about me. It's like my dad would be like cooking J Chinese food in the kitchen, and my mom would be like watching a football game and screaming at the refs. So which is like like, a, which is awesome. It was super cool, way. yeah. And so it was cool that way. But um, my dad bought a Nintendo Entertainment System, like the original Nintendo, and um, and we would play. We would play it together, right? And some of my favorite memories I have are my my dad is this grizzly bear of a man. And, yes, Gwen. Um, hydration is a key. Uh, um, he would he would like be playing the original Super Mario Brothers. And um, he'd be playing and playing and playing, and I'd just be sitting next to him, just wide-eyed, trying to absorb everything that was happening. And, you know, he'd get frustrated. He'd die. He'd, something had happened to him. And he would get, he'd, like, rage. He'd be like, oh, and he'd slam his hands down on the bed, and I'd, like, bounce three feet in the air. 
and uh, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. And would be like, "You can do it, Dad. Don't worry, you can do it." And he'd keep going, keep going, keep going. And so uh, to finish that story up, he he played the Super Mario Brothers from beginning to end. And when he beat Super Mario Brothers, he dropped the controller and he walked away from gaming forever. Like he never touched another <laughs> game. That was the, that was the beginning and the end of his gaming now, experience. Now, so, I swear my dad did the exact same hold, thing. Hold on, hold on now. Yeah. Go ahead, Go ahead, when when you say he beat the game, okay, mm -hmm. are you talking about fully? Fully. Or the game. He beat. You know, that's he went through. He went one through eight. File. He went through one through eight, and then one through eight again. Uh, so I don't know, like the original, like I don't know about additional, uh, you know, new game plus modes or any of that kind of stuff that's going on. But he went, he went all the way to the end and rescued the princess, right? Like for the very back end, he no rescued saving. the princess, <laughs> and there was no saving. There are no save files. I mean, back then. The, <coughs> excuse me. The only Nintendo game that had any kind of saving on it was, um, well, there were a couple actually, but the the primary one everybody remembers was the original Legend of Zelda game, right? Yeah. Um, the gold cartridge yeah. Legend of Zelda game. Yep. Um, it had it had a little watch battery inside of it, that so technically the game cartridge never deactivated. It was constantly powered, which is how it maintained its save files, right? So you. You played the game cartridge. You'd slide it into your machine, and it would power. It would take over powering the cartridge, and you'd be playing, playing, playing. And then when your game was done, you would power the the machine off, and then the game cartridge had a little battery inside, which would keep wow. your game alive, running. So that was the I only way for that. them to save. Yeah, that's the only <laughs> way that they could save. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So like, if you go to like a, um, you know, a, a yard sale or something, and you come across a gold cartridge original Nintendo Legend of Zelda game. Um, and if you put it in and it has their original save files, that, that like, diligent little battery has been running since the early 80s, right? Has been powering that cartridge wow. since yep. the early 80s, <laughs> which is pretty wild. And the scary thing is, is to replace those, you can replace them if you pop the cartridge open, but if you pop it out, their save file's gone, right? It's gone forever. So, anyway. So there is like a life thing. But yeah, back then there was no save file. So he, it really was like he'd get home from work, we'd eat dinner, and then we'd sit down and I'd watch him play. Or it'd be like a Saturday <laughs> morning. And he would just start on level one, stage one, you know, and then move his way through. And I would wow. just sit next to him glued to it. And so, yeah, after he dropped the controller and was done with the game, um, I picked it up, you know. Um, and then uh, around about that same time, uh, uh, my parents bought a um, an old PC computer, like a back back when it was only in DOS mode, right? DOS mode was Bang. Not and um, my aunt gave me the game, The Secret of Monkey Island. Um, <laughs> and, and so I love it. I was raised on original Nintendo and um, DOS mode Secret of Monkey Island uh, stuff. So that's where like a lot of my my personal opinions about gaming come from. Is like it's got to be clever. It's got to be funny. It's got to be something nobody's seen before, you know. And so, like, The Secret of Monkey Island kind of, I think, it, I think it's who I, it's, it's who, who I am as a person is attributed, <laughs> can be attributed to The Secret of Monkey Island, you know. Yeah. It's fair. Yeah, but that's kind of where my roots come from. Or got uh, started, at least. Yeah. I, I, I remember for me, like, it was, it was definitely DOS Box as well, it was a big mm. one. And I played pretty much. I used to play every like Sierra game that came out as a kid. Oh, that's fantastic! I was yeah. a huge Sierra gamer. The old Sierra and games. I probably shouldn't have been age. for some of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are yeah. some that yeah. I was surprised. Pro really probably not. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I played oh, all that stuff. Like Tim Schafer is like my idol when it comes to game oh, game nice. development and stuff, and he. He was like one of the main writers for the Secret of Monkey Island games and Day of the Tentacle and uh, Full Throttle and all that stuff. I played I played all of those. The old, um, yeah, I played all that stuff. <laughs> the point and click adventure games. And that. Yeah. So, what what got you into? Sorry, go ahead, Deb. Actually, go ahead. Well, I mean, I was gonna kind of use what he just said as a segue. Sure. Yeah, you know, you're talking about game developing and your passion and whatnot you're actually making a game aren't you i am yeah uh-huh 
Miraculously. Miraculously. Oh, yeah. Um, so. See, uh, segue, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> the, so yeah, I'm making a game. It's called Orbitals. Um, it's a, um, it's it's a work in progress that we're currently working on right now. We've been lucky enough to have been accepted into uh, PAX East in the PAX Rising Showcase, which is just like a dream come true. Um, we. Uh, we like this came exactly when we needed it to happen. So yeah, we're we're making a game called Orbitals. It's it's awesome. I don't know. Am I allowed to like link you stuff for it or anything yeah. like that? Yeah. Uh, let me see. I think. Uh, actually, uh, yeah. I don't know if Dev has permissions on that. Uh, I think <laughs> if Gwen's in chat, she can give you permission. I I I just to be on the safe side. Oh yeah, right on. Let's see. I really don't want. Yeah, don't want Space Captain Space getting timed out. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That would so be like, horrible. So what, what, what made you want to finally, like, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to spend the time and get this out of there. You know, it, it, it was, um, it was, it's crazy. So, I don't know, if I may spin you a yarn, if I may. Go for it. Tail, Go right? Um, uh, the... So back in 20, well, okay, so basically, my friends and I have been dreaming of being video game developers for a long, long time, right? For years, since we were right. kids, right? And um, my, my, my really good friend Dave, who is like our tech lead and lead programmer, um, he actually, uh, back in the day when I was just playing video games, he's, he's like a certified genius, you know, and... Um, he, he was actually making, uh, he made a game called Air Taxi for the Amiga, um, which is currently held in like one of the best multiplayer games for the Amiga made, kind of a thing. He made a game called Air Taxi. And like, we've always talked about making a game together and doing different things. And I was collaborating with um, my friend Nick, who is also on the project with Orbitals. Um, we were all, we've been, you know, back in like 2005, we finally sat down and we're like, let's really work some stuff out. and. You know, I filled like a Google Doc with like 15 game ideas and we worked on like five of them really, really in depth and kind of built some things out. And we got really close to this, um, making this game called uh, Mojo Dojo uh, for a while. Um, yeah. And, uh, and, and it was kind of happening, but it wasn't happening. And I was a school teacher at the time. Um, I, I taught second grade for years. And, um, oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, and so... Um, you know, we kind of just went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then um, via some, via a bunch of weird business things that ended up happening, Nick and Dave both ended up with um, a good chunk of time on their hands. And they started um, just kind of prototyping some ideas out, some different things, trying to figure out what they could learn utilizing this, this program called Unity um, as a platform. And they kind of just were messing around with some ideas and things. And then um, uh, summertime rolled around and uh, and I said, well, let's do this for real. Like, uh, as a school teacher, I had my summer va like I had summer vacations um, right. off of work. And I said, all right, I'm going to treat this like a full time job. I'm going to pretend that I have a full time job as a game developer. Um, I'm going to go into work every day, and I'm just going to bust it out every single day for the entire summer. So we started working, and we started getting really serious with things. And um, and uh, um. Around about a month before I was supposed to go back to teaching, um, we, we were working on Orbitals at the time. Um, uh, we got it, some attention from a, a gaming publisher on Twitter. Like we we were just uploading random stuff to Twitter as like a um, you know to keep people aware of what we're up to or whatever. And um, a gaming publisher reached out to us and they were like, "Hey, we kind of like what you're up to. You know, why don't you send us some information about it?" And so we started communicating with this publisher thinking oh my gosh this is it we could get our game published so i had wow. this moment where um where i had to choose what i was going to do with my future and um <laughs> and uh and i decided like i spoke about it with my wife and we went back and forth about what our options are and what our possibilities are and um I like a week before like no I think it was three weeks and I swore I would never do this in my career but three weeks before school started the next year school started I walked into my principal's office and I sat down uh. with him and I'm like hey man listen I've got this opportunity um, I can't pass it up and he was really understanding he was incredibly understanding 
Um, and I'm like, I got to go full bore into this. So you're, I quit. You're all in on this. I'm all in. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, look, I got to go all in on this. Wow. And he said, okay. So um, I quit being a school teacher and I went in full time as a game dev. And um, we had a whole bunch of ups and downs. Like that publisher ended up ghosting us a little bit. And um, we uh, were trying to reach out to them and then different things were happening. And then uh, I I submitted our game to uh, Indie Mega Booth, which uh, there's a game developer. So there's a conference called GDC, the Game Developers Conference, which was held in San Francisco. Um, and it's like, uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. It's like all the people from the gaming game development world, they go and they bump elbows and they have like award ceremonies and all this stuff. But they had a, a showcase called the, um, the, uh, uh, the Indie Mega Booth is what it was called. And um, we like, that's just a wild hair, decided to do a Hail Mary pass and, and, and try out for it. And like miraculously, we got accepted, right? So suddenly wow. now we're like, oh, wow, we're going to be able to take our game to, to GDC. And like, you know, all these industry professionals are going to be able to see it. And oh my gosh, we'll get a publisher and it'll become a thing. And our game will come out. And it's going to be amazing. And so we're gearing up, we're gearing up, we're gearing up, we're buying hotels. I mean, we're, we're you know, getting hotel rooms, we're buying plane tickets, we're, we're getting all this stuff happening. And uh, we're like, oh my gosh, we're on a sky, we're on a rocket to the moon. Um, and, uh, and then, and that was March of 2020, right? So then w whispers start popping up about this like mysterious illness coming from the East, you know? And we're like, oh man, what's the, oh, there's no way they're gonna cancel GDC. It's too oh, huge. It'd right. be millions of dollars. Millions of oh. dollars would be lost, right? And so then like a month before we're supposed to go, the entire world shuts down. They cancel GDC, oh. they cancel everything, right? So, um, yeah, so we we go into this um, development and hibernation mode for a while where we just start improving the game, 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 um, building, you know, improving the, the character models, improving the, the shaders, improving the multiplayer, you know, everything, you know, the, 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 the AI, tracking and all this different stuff and um traversal tracking and everything we're just building building, building. Got more dedicated during the pandemic after that. yeah we did we went full <laughs> into it right but at the same time like you know funding's running out <laughs> you know like like time yeah. is time is against us so we started we started working for other companies and doing some like uh some um freelancing stuff we started working doing freelancing things to kind of keep the door open which was cool because i, I got this opportunity to learn that there's a whole world out there of 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 jobs <laughs> that you can do, right? Uh, which is which is neat, and so it was kind of cool that way. So we were able to keep our heads above water, but at the same time, we're kind of trudging through the desert uh, on a horse with no name, and we're like hoping that we can make it to the end. And then uh, we do another hail, <clears throat> hail mary pass, wild hair submission to um, to Pax for their PAX Rising Showcase, yeah, and yeah. miraculously we made it. So, wow. yeah, so it, it's been this crazy, crazy ride. So we feel like we've yeah. been trudging through the desert um, uh, only to find out that our oasis is waiting for us if we can if we can win a tap dancing competition. I, so. I, I, I hope so. I hope this is going to be <laughs> a big thing for you. Yeah, I, I really I, appreciate it. I feel that, like man. it will be. We're hoping so. The amount, really amount of passion so. you've already showed us is already like... <laughs> It's already really good to me. Oh, I appreciate um, that. You must have you must have a great support system to do all this while you guys all have families while you're doing this. Yeah, my yeah, uh, I, I am an incredibly <laughs> lucky man. I have yeah, my <laughs> wife is, is super understanding, super supportive, super super cool about it all. And that's the thing is, you know, we've been lucky to keep our heads above water and like find find ways of keeping the lights turned on and, and people fed and everything while we while we trudge through it, you know. We've been really, really lucky that way. And so, yeah, Chase, I'm, I'm a honestly dream isn't easy. No, it dream isn't. Easy. Yeah, and having somebody who's and having somebody who's willing to uh, go through the hardships requisite to chase your dream, dreams with you is valuable beyond measure. So I'm I'm really lucky. I'm really really lucky. Yeah. So so you settled on orbitals. What is it about? What is the orbitals about? Oh man, yeah. Okay, so in orbitals you play as these. Um, Apocal like post-apocalyptic arena fighters with gravity manipulation abilities, right? Gravity um, manipulation. Yeah. The okay. the key to it is is that you've got gravity manipulation abilities. So it's a it's um an arena fighting game with your friends, uh, where your your avatars, your characters are able to manipulate gravity 
and walk along the walls and atop the ceilings. So you battle along the ceilings and walls. There is no up, there is no down. It is, you know, gravity. It's kind of like Ender's <laughs> Game battles. in great. The, yeah, in that you can you you get to throw yourself around the map, so your character can drop off the ceiling and orbit around an object in the room, and then use their their weapons recoil to throw themselves around. Um, so yeah, so Orbitals is this arena fighter game where you go up against your friends uh, um, uh, in battle in an arena. Meanwhile, there's all these NPC monsters that are flying around the area trying to attack you as well. Oh, meanwhile. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. And, uh, you know, when you defeat your enemies, when you defeat your friends, their body explodes and a little collectible point pops up, and the first person to collect five points wins. But when you get blown up, you wow. lose a point, right? So you're, you're a little arena fighter running around this crazy environment, flying around this crazy environment, using your gravity manipulation abilities, blowing up npc monsters and fighting your friends and whoever makes it to five points first wins the match uh and then you go into a menu screen where between matches so it's also like best of you know two you know best of three right so you between matches you can use the points that you've earned to upgrade the abilities and powers of your arena fighter so the next time you jump into the arena you wow. get you've got upgraded abilities you've got upgraded skills and so you get to just battle again and so um, every time you play, it's a completely different game. Um, that's crazy. You, you know, that, that's <laughs> that's like yeah. up in the ante from a regular arena game. Like, okay. Oh, right. Yeah, it's yeah. That's kind of the idea. Is okay, we're, we're trying so to do something new. Gonna just go uh, put that on my Steam <laughs> wish list. Yes, yeah, please. That'd be great. Yeah, already yeah. done. I I, I already yeah. said that I'm buying the Eddie Crew pretty much a, all copy space. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Oh crap! Uh, looks like I was allowed to share things if, for sixty seconds, and I, I yeah, we, we took care of it for you. You took care yeah, of it. we did. I took care of it, and then I also uh, made you. Yeah, I, I made you a you. mod in my chat. Oh, nice! All right, the, there you go. So this is the, there's a link to the game right there. There's a link to the game. It's orbitalsgame.com. Uh, there's there. Yeah, there's an, yeah. There's I, a I made you right a mod there. just so you didn't have to worry about it. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's, that honestly sounds great. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, no wonder Pax picked that. Cause that's I was not... gonna say, so you're gonna, you're actually gonna be in my neck of the woods. Oh, am I? That's great. Are you in the, are you in the East Coast? I'll put it to you this way: I pack my car in Harvard Yard. Oh, right on, brother. That's like, great. I, I like how every American knows that accent. <laughs> pack my car in Harvard Yard. I'll put it's it to true. you. I will put it to you this way: I was actually. Pretty much drove past where you're gonna be, uh, where Pax is. Dude, come to Pax. Come hang out, man. Come give me yeah, a high go, five at go Pax, bro. I'm gonna be in the booth, man. Dude, I'm gonna be the, we're working 14 hour days. That's the crazy thing. We're getting all this information oh. from him. It's 14 hour days, so we're gonna be there for four days. Yeah, if I can. 14 hour days. If I can come so, up with the money, I will definitely swing by. You know. I, I, sh I should fly I to Boston that. and get luckily right there. Yes. Us. Yeah. Luckily, they give us Expo tickets. So hey, listen, anybody who wants to come to Pax. And give me a high five. I will give you yeah. a high five. We should packs. go. We That'll should all amazing. go to Boston. Give space some support in person. That'll be amazing. Dude, fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> we should definitely all go to Boston. Let's go. When is it? <laughs> it is April twenty first to the twenty fourth. I don't know if I have the time to do. That. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's like it starts on a Thursday. It goes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this That's year. That's really soon, do, guys. They didn't oh. used to do four. I think it's it used to be three days. But um, yeah. hey, hey, here What's we cool go. Is I went to Pax once. I like I I uh, I went to Pax East. Like I flew to Boston and did Pax East with a friend as like a you know you know just being there as like a yeah yeah. Oh yeah, no, it was a, a person fuck. roaming the aisles. So like being able to have a booth there is just ripping my brain. Into That's pieces. gonna be great. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm terrified. Insane. There's so yeah, many no, people. It is <laughs> it is fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse like, me. Can't, like, honestly, I might need to, like, message you and figure out where you're staying. Come meet yeah, you at the hotel, absolutely. man. Yeah, dude, that'd be super fun, man. That'd just, like, send cool. send Mike a picture of, like, me and you just, like, yo, <laughs> yeah. you're missing out, buddy. Uh, what's up, man? We got noodles. What you gonna do? Yo, yes. <laughs> you can do actual hot tub streams in Boston? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be sick. <laughs> that'd be I, don't know if, I don't know if Ralph will be there for you, though, but... <laughs> No, see, if anything, we're not going to get noodles. We're going to go get chowder. There you go. Chowder, get some chowder. Yeah. Got to get, get the chowder. chowder. Boston. 
And I, I know like six or seven places right around the arena where <laughs> to go. That's fantastic. Well, you go. You'll wow. have to give me some recommendations, dude. Seriously, that'd be Sullivan's great. Castle Island. <laughs> he's, he's, he's you. You know, I'm sending you there, man. You're already going. <laughs> Kelly is over at Revere Beach. Plan, so you're actually in person. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, so, um, what? What do you like? Can you say when it's supposed to be released, or do you know for sure the rough idea? So yeah, the thing, uh, man. Okay, so here's here's the thing about it all is uh. There, we're hoping for late 2022. Like, we're hoping for this year, right? We're hoping for sometime late this year, right? If everything goes according to plan, we'll be able to, like, meet some, you know, really cool people. We'll be able to potentially find a publisher. We'll be able to, like, get everything done and then, you know, wrapped up so that we can, you know, because there's three of us. Like, we're, we're making a game that I think, um, and this is, oh, hang on. I hear my dog's pitter-pattering feet. Okay, anyway. Um... <laughs> They're a uh, dog cam. Let's go. That I think if you know if it were made by a larger company, they probably would have upwards of like fifty people working on it, right? And yeah, and we're, that's we're true. three people, you know, yeah. and we're three, so we wear a lot of hats. Like if if you go to the website, um, the 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 video was me. Like I made the video, right? Like I made I edited the video together, you know. Like all of the the we built the websites. We built, you know, we do everything from everything right like literally everything is done by three different people and so um so you guys are trying to be a the, lot of work. the next concerned um, ape <laughs> so if it's just yeah, yeah yeah really that's kind of the way it is is it's like you do what you can do um but if we want to bust it out by the end of this year we're hoping to get published and we're hoping to yeah. move from there if we can get published then we can get more people on 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 hand and then get the thing put out right and then we'll move on to um other games that's the the dream is to you know the orbitals will be out and we'll get to start on game number two and game number three oh. and keep going yeah, from he's there already, right? he's already and planning so, it he's already getting it I, dude i've got <laughs> uh, yeah I, that's that's the game i play is i was gonna say he's probably already got like the entire concept for the next game down <laughs> well that's the problem is like i have i have the, the entire concept for the next five games down and with He's like twenty in development after that, but I have to be able to convince I have to be able to convince my two friends that it's that's the game we should make, right? <laughs> they yeah, both have right. to be like fully invested in it, so I'm constantly pitching stuff to them, being like, "This is what we should do," and they're like, eh. "Hey, maybe if you maybe if your game does well enough, they'll be like, you know what, we gotta keep doing it." <laughs> yeah, here's yeah, we definitely want to keep doing it. It's just which one yeah. to pick, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have a bunch of ideas so you can kind of like see how it goes. Yeah, that's the thing. Maybe a lot of easier like... from a publisher. It's like maybe you guys should do this. Whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. Yeah. That's kind of what we're hoping for. You know, we're hoping we're hoping that it'll happen. So if if we're able to get, you know, it just depends. If we if uh, if like we don't get a publisher or whatever happens, then we'll get the we'll probably self publish the thing. It'll probably be sometime next year, like twenty twenty three. Um, we're we're currently. Uh, We've already been able to build a relationship um, with Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, and then we have our Steam profile as well. So if we self-publish, we will be able to um, publish on all of those platforms, right? So even if we put the thing out ourselves, um, we'll be able to be found on Nintendo Switch and Xbox and PlayStation and that'd Steam. Be great. Yeah, so that'd be really, really good. Now, but, you know, if you build a relationship with a publisher, then you can get things like incredible advertising and you can get marketing <laughs> and people know streamers and people know yeah. youtubers and people know all that stuff right oh, so, that'd be, yeah. now i got a it's question for scary. you mm -hmm. do you have intentions of cross play uh you know that would be a dream come true <laughs> uh <laughs> as of right now it's as of right now it's not really in our scope but that would be cool though that okay. would be honestly cool networking is um an unbelievable nightmare uh, I, be I believe it i believe <laughs> yeah, it well, the, for sure. and and getting everything to communicate properly is um wizardry uh that, <laughs> that, it's, that, it's that really, really demands a lot of time and energy for, right? and it, so it's basically it just depends on how much we want to get it how, how fast we can get out and how, how worth it it would and be and that right? comes down like, if you get if you get a publisher you might yeah, the, right like yeah it's yeah. like hey can you can you keep can you keep three families alive long enough to make the job get done. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> keep our right. lights on so we can keep doing this for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. it comes out this year. It's gonna be. It's. It, yeah, I, I have. I've had it saved since I first played a year ago. I appreciate that. That's really cool <laughs> of you. Yeah, it's been. Yeah, it's nice. And and, and devil devil uh, devil talks to me too. She's really pumped for it. Oh, that's great. She wants, she wants to be one of your testers. And stuff oh yeah, that. absolutely. That's the thing. If we get things to a certain level, like I'm, I'm definitely gonna be trying out some you, there's gonna be there's still a lot of play testing that needs to happen you know and right. i would love to utilize people it'd be great <laughs> i volunteer as tribute I, I said i was streaming yeah we, yeah we, and we that's the thing yeah I, like, I, I, it's so funny i, I was yeah. pitching that idea to people and it's always like okay remember this though like it's gonna be work <laughs> you know I, like you gave test you play test a game and it's like i need you guys to play it until it breaks and that might not be as fun <laughs> as you think it is dude <laughs> are you kidding me i love breaking games that's cool. Let's That's go. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Dev and Devil definitely have the time. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he's pumped for it. Yeah, excellent. Like, I even got, that, my, that, even got my evil laugh having, face uh, on. <laughs> that's the benefit of having like, a, a personality online. You have people that be like, I'll do it for you. And like, you, network, yeah. you network with people and you literally just play the game to the ground. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I got no problem with it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm I'm sure if I talk I I've got I know bigger VTubers I could talk to that would probably be willing to test play it for you too. Get it out to a bigger audience. We're, we're gonna, you guys are fantastic. We're gonna help make this happen for you. Fuck guys. yeah, man! I appreciate that. I'm pumped. Let's do it. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> so how about how about in term in terms of your stream? Like, do you intend on keeping that going for a while? You know the thing is is like um. I, I've always, I was, so, oh man, like way back in the day, I started um, with the Game Grumps, right? Like I started watching YouTubers specifically, right? Like I started watching YouTubers um, because my cousin kind of, she was like, oh my gosh, these two guys are super funny. You got to go check them out. And I started watching the Game Grumps and I'm like, oh yeah, these guys are hilarious, you know? And then I, that led to like Markiplier and Jacksepticeye and, and, you know, I started kind of watching these YouTubers and things and and then a friend of mine, actually my pro Dave, my programmer, was like, you know, you ought to stream. You like you, you've got a personality for it. You could this and that, whatever. And I'm like, oh no, I could never. Oh, I could never, you know. And then so he he like um. He like for years, it was like for a couple of years, he would like at Christmas time he would gift me things, uh, for for Christmas that were like streamer things, right? Like a like a webcam or a microphone. And it was like you need to start streaming you know and it was like here's the stuff you need to start streaming so he really kind of like supported me and pushed me towards it even though i was really self-conscious and um i started oh, that's streaming. hard to believe that you're self-conscious because i was you know, well yeah i don't know i just you know you, you always think like nobody yeah, wants to I know. look at you while you play a game you know what i mean like nobody wants to blah um i really appreciate that's super nice of you to say that because i still don't think any like, I don't, like I don't even know like, I I'll, I'll tell I'll tell you this. My, the, the first stream I heard from you, I got I think it was from Spidey Gwen. Mm-hmm. She's great. I, I love I Spidey Gwen. Listen to you doing Coraline. Oh yeah. That's how I met, that's how I first saw your stream is Coraline. Oh man, that's super cool. The audio of that, and I was like, man, <laughs> this guy, this guy's voice is amazing. Gwen's like, yeah, this is, his voice is great for it. <laughs> and then I think that I came through your I'll stream because of. I, either Mike recommended rating you, or we, it was Yeti who rated you. I forget which. Oh yeah. Uh, we we we've, we've spread the word about space for a long time now. Oh, you guys are amazing. <laughs> that seriously blows my mind. It seriously blows my oh, mind. No, I. That's like, crazy. Yeah, I I've 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 told them that if you had the time to do it full full time, <clears throat> you'd probably be way bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I think you you're know, the right the personality thing. for. It. Oh god, you guys are gonna make me. I can't even. No, it's true. I honestly believe kindness. you have a honestly... good personality for it. Oh. There are big time streamers that have less personality that you oh, yeah. than you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. That's really kind of you. And, That's and, really and kind of you. I mean, I just got started part, with like, oh, sorry, what? The the, be, the best part is, is like I think you're you're just being you. I don't think you're being anything but yourself. Best way to I do it. Just play games and hang out with people. That's all I'm really <laughs> yeah, trying to it. do. You know what I mean? Like that's all you need. Yeah, like uh, it started with a uh, man. Oh, you guys, are the oh my gosh, it's Sally Nightmare. I'm looking at your chat right now. Sally, hi, yeah. hey, yep. I love you guys too. Stop, 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 
So how did you like finally like I'm gonna Holy get smokes. on and start streaming? I'm gonna do so, this. So what? Basically, it came down to like um. So. Yeah, I guess what I kind of played with the idea. I thought about it for a while. I thought about it for a while. I had a YouTube channel, right? I was doing everything on my YouTube channel, um, and I was just uploading videos of me playing games and being stupid and. And people were, you know, I'd get, you know, like 10 views or something, and I'd be thrilled. That's like 10 people actually watched me play that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> and it's like, why would they waste their time, right? But I was having <laughs> fun. True. I just enjoyed the video editing. I liked making jokes and memes pop up on the screen. I liked just goofing off and all this stuff, right? And then um, uh, I, I played with the idea. I was talking with my wife about it. I'm like, you know, I'm thinking about maybe streaming a little bit. But the thing is, is, you know... I'm a dad and it's like the evening, like really I have limited time. I think that's my major limitation for streaming is just my, the amount of time oh, I actually yeah. have to we, stream, we it, you know, totally. um, yeah. is, is how much time I, <laughs> excuse me, is how much time I actually have to actually do the streaming. But, um, I had this thing happen where, uh, so my, my wife is like four or five months pregnant, uh, and she's, just exhausted like because she's five months pregnant right she's just completely right. exhausted so she was she started doing this she was like oh my gosh you know what i'm so tired i'm just gonna go to bed right and i'm like okay cool i might just play some games or something I'll, I'll catch up with you later so she'd go to bed and i'm like maybe i'll stream it you know like maybe maybe i'll stream it right so all of a sudden there were like uh, there was like uh, a couple of there were a few months up until my daughter was born um where um, I had like pretty consistent nights of just being like, oh, well, she's so tired that she just can't stay awake, right? So I'll, she'll go to bed and I'll just hop, sit down and play a video game. And yeah. I started streaming and, and like uh, I didn't have a face cam. I didn't have a start menu. I didn't have any of this, the, the random crap that I have now, right? It was all just me <laughs> hitting the go button and, uh, and just playing some games and stuff started to build, right? And it's like, people started following me people started this and that and all of a sudden it was like a couple months in i'm like babe i'm i'm i made affiliate i have like 50 people who followed me right like sky collective was actually 50 the the 50th person to follow me and i'm like oh my oh, gosh nice. this is crazy this is actually happening and she was like so lovely and so supportive she's like that's so great i'm so glad you're having a good time and i'm telling her the tales and everything and so it kind of started <laughs> that way it was really just I just had some free time in the evening time and I'm like, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna give it a try. And then little by little by little, it's like, then I added a face cam, then I added this, then I added that, then I got a better microphone, then I got a, you know, I put yeah, a light up so that people really can see little, me. And, you know, it's, it's been this slow you progress. don't have the time and yet have all this. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's the thing, you know, it's funny because it's just like, you know, it's just like, oh, we're hanging out doing nothing. So I'm just kind of yeah. like, oh, what if I throw this picture on right there and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And so I just kind of slowly build things as time goes by, you know, like uh, I'll start streaming at 930, but at nine o'clock, I'm like editing some little dumb thing together. You know what I mean? And just kind of building stuff up that way. So it really just kind of got started that way. I was like, you know, if I'm going to be playing, I have these hilarious friends, too. That's the cool thing is I've got these really amazing friends. I've, I'm, I'm really yeah, lucky. Do. Um, where uh, I have had the same friends since high school, right? Like, my friends and I have been friends for, like, 20 years, right? And it's it blows my mind that, like, we've been able to maintain these awesome friendships via video games. You know, we we, we connect with each other online again and stuff. And so, we'd like, I, I mean, I'd be playing games with my friends and, like, crying. I'm laughing so hard, right? So I thought, <laughs> like, what if I just hit the go, like, the, the stream button while we're playing these games? And so these guys are hilarious, and I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. So I figured I'm playing games. If, if I'm playing games with them, the content is super funny. If I'm playing games by myself, then streaming gets people to hang out with me. And I'm, I'm an extrovert. It's just the way it is. I, I like people a lot, and I, I get jazzed up hanging out with folks. And so um, it's really great because it's like, well, if I'm going to be playing whatever dumb game, uh, I, I might as well have, like, some people to hang out with while I'm doing it, you know? And That's so pretty much how I started doing it too, because like, I started off as just the background guy for getting and be playing with them, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And I was like, yeah. what, what if I just turn my PlayStation on and just put it to broadcast? Mm -hmm. See, and I did it like. Just give it a try, right? Yeah, I see, just gave it a try. See, that's how I started, you know, with my Xbox. I was playing <laughs> Dead by Daylight and you know Snow Runner and whatnot, and eventually. 
my laptop caught fire, so I was kind of. <laughs> I, I was. Your laptop dev. caught fire. Poor that dev. sounds like a story you need to tell, man. Yeah, so. How'd that okay, so pretty much this laptop that I had been using was already like four year old, four years old when I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and just constantly using it, opening, closing, the plastic around the screen and the hinges and whatnot broke. Oh, God. oh my gosh. To the point where it wouldn't stay up or close and if you didn't open it just right, the basically the face was coming off the screen and then eventually the other one broke so it wasn't connected to the bottom at all and then that piece came off completely and pretty much just I'm holding the screen up with the keyboard dangling by a wire that's amazing and it's still running it was still working one day I you know finished up what I was doing I was going down, going to go downstairs to make some food. I closed the laptop and getting myself situated. Next thing I know, I see smoke billowing from it. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, uh, fuck. Uh -oh. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Unplug that. It wasn't plugged in. That's the thing. <laughs> like. Here's what we need a battery fire. That'll, that'll improve your life is a battery fire. Yeah. Battery fire. Well, lucky and depending on how you look at it unluckily earlier like a couple of weeks before i had been in a car accident and my car was totaled mm -hmm. so you know unluckily that i was in an accident luckily i had money to buy a new pc mm. so i bought a new pc bought a red dragon webcam just you know picked up Heck, up until about a month ago, I was using a headset that was being held together with Gorilla Tape. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, man. No. See, like, that that's just... It, it's one of those things where it proves that you can... Anybody can stream, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it really... Yeah. Some of the best streamers... That's the thing is, like... <clears throat> I guess I kind of started talking about it earlier, but, like... <clears throat> some of the best streamers I know are, like, the most low-budget. Like... I'm not there for yeah, the budget. Too. You know what? I'm not there for like yeah. the, even the quality. It's not that what's important to me. It's like I, what I get attracted to for streamers is like, and YouTubers and stuff is like positivity. There's so many, it's like, there's so many streamers out there that it's just like you, they, they're constantly blaming the game or they're blaming yeah. their friends. It should always they're, be about personality. Upset. They're just, they're always just like, uh, I'm so cool. This doesn't reflect who I am. I'm, I'm really cool. You should, you guys know I'm cool. Right. And it's like, blah, I, I hate yeah. that garbage. Like, I, I, I always uh, reference, what I want I always is reference people. someone like I want happy people. You yeah, know what I mean? Like exactly. people who are fun. You are gonna I, make my night better instead of just making me ugh, want to wash there, my face. There's one particular big time streamer he puts like almost no money into the actual budget of his show and it's like who now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's just himself. Yeah, just being fun and funny, he's, right? He's just a regular funny dude who's just like you just listen to him and go, Oh, he sounds like such a nice guy. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, because that's what it is. That's the, that's the miracle of Twitch, in my opinion, yeah. is that like, what, like, it's less about watching somebody do something and more about interacting with them, right? Like that's the cool yeah. thing about Twitch is you get to interact with people, and it's like I've legitimately made friends. You know what I mean? Like I've yeah. made friends just having them pop in and hang out, and you yeah, get I, to know I, people, you know. I and it's like friend, so. I had a friend that was people. like, "Hey, you want to want me to?" you make cookies to send to people in the states <laughs> yeah. i was lucky yeah. so i was like when, I, I when, by the way that's mike that's how crazy is that yeah how cool is that but yeah that's so amazing I it's easy follow when i got affiliate too mm -hmm. and, and yeah really like, that. that's i mean awesome. yeah, i found i well no i was gonna say like <laughs> you know you talk about making friends on here and it's like I look at the Nightmare Crew. I look at the Yeti Crew. I look at you know Penlock Holmes and the friends I've made over through her. To the point, you know, like Penlock is I consider her a sister. Mm -hmm. You know, I consider my little group over there family. Yeah. So 
I get along with. It's funny. It's, it's, it's crazy I get along. Because like yeah. Dev was the kind of guy that was like not into like being in big groups of people, and then <sighs> more comfortable and just meeting uh, meeting other people, and like he realized pe I, me too actually. Where it's like you know what they're kind of cool. I'll just go in there and talk to them and see what happens. Yeah, just hang out with folks. It's so crazy <laughs> how it ends up working. It seriously is nuts. Like I have. I have people that I'm in contact with on a daily basis now that, like, I didn't even know a year ago. You know what I mean? I didn't yeah. even know them. I did, like, they, we don't live in the same country. We don't live in the yeah. same time like, zone. You know what I mean? We, we, like, we're so far apart from each other, but we, like, see each other. All the, yeah. We have history together. You know what I mean? It's amazing. I got it's a stalker in amazing. New Zealand, you know? It's just the way it is. <laughs> 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 Gaming devil always hangs out with us, and she's all the way in the UK. Yep. I know. It's like I always forget. I was. I'm always like. I'm assuming people are like waking up when I wake up, and then I realize. <laughs> I remember like, oh crap, they're going to bed. I mean, I mean? Yeah. I mean, just think about it this way. For me, it's midnight right now. Yeah. Yeah. We modified our schedule for you. Yeah. Oh, dude, I appreciate that. I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh, we don't be so, dude. That's super cool of you. That's super. We cool. to have you are you on. kidding? We to have this dude, it's an honor to have you on. Yeah, really. <laughs> I don't know why it's an honor to have me on, but I appreciate you saying so. That's especially cool. if you become a big time so developer, you were here first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. We we had the we had the first interview with Space Captain Space. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> oh gosh. Like I'm literally gonna have to find He's you hoping. when you're here and get your autograph so I can say I got the first one. <laughs> and we you're all get paid kind, because you're this guy's kind. great. You're yeah. too kind. Man, you're way too kind. But yeah, like I guess I lost track of your question a while back there. I just realized, like, uh, so you asked fine. me, like, am I gonna keep streaming? The plan is, yeah. Like, basically, <laughs> if I that's basically yeah, 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 it's yeah, I'm gonna keep streaming, and it's mostly just gonna be, and I, I, you know, like, um, you know, I, I, I will dedicate as much time to it as I can responsibly. That's where I'm at, right? Yeah. Like, that's what I'll be able to do. It's like whatever I can responsibly dedicate to. Um, to the stream and to playing games and stuff. I, I, you know, if I'm playing a game, I'm going to be streaming it. And I mean, uh, if you have more notoriety, you can make enough income to help you keep the lights on without doing an extra job. That would be a dream come true. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Because yeah, then be you can do your developing true. and all that from home and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I like, got like I got talking with my buddy Dave, and we were like, just for example, like I highly recommend the Game Grumps. I love those guys. They're super funny. Um, but I, I was I was rolling I was rolling my eyes and just shaking my head because it's like. What an amazing life they've been able to like a build for themselves. You know what I mean? They built this amazing life where like, um, uh, they've got something like, I don't even know. I think the last time I checked, it was something like over five million subscribers, right? Um, on YouTube or whatever. So then it's like they decide to make a game, right? And granted, they made a great game. They hired really good developers. They hired really good writers. They hired really good people. They got a very talented group of people together and they made a game right like they were they, they funded this game and then they just have to all they got to do is get on their youtube channel and be like hey guys we made a game and then five million people unbelievable are like oh cool they made a game if only a fraction of those people decide to go out and support them by buying the I, game they're, yeah. they're immediately if you get successful one, if you get like 10 you know percent of that oh yeah and so i'm like oh and then i you know i mentioned that to my buddy dave and he's like dude you need to stream more you need to stream a lot more you need to start streaming more <laughs> <laughs> it's like if only dude i'm glad you have so much faith in me i'm really glad he has so much faith in me well Jeez. we 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 just have three people who said they're gonna save the game for you in the chat <laughs> i appreciate so, like, that chat it's not, I appreciate it's not a that. lot but you know what oh, like, i got god man i haven't even read the reading chat Sarah, you Guys, you, Sally Nightmare is amazing, isn't she? Sally's great. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. If we, if we can get you a couple hundred stitches, please go. Let's spread the word. I will, I will cry myself to sleep with joy. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Me? Sally's got you in the wish list. I've had you on there for a while. <laughs> Same. Uh, Deb's friend Yuri said he's gonna do it. He's gonna have you on. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, you definitely got people saving you already. We're waiting yes, for this. Yes, please and thank you. You guys, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even believe it. It's so weird to just go from being like, uh, you know, like writing all this stuff down in a three ring notebook, you know, like a, a oh, binder yeah. to all of a sudden having it be like, oh, we're going to be showing it at PAX, you know, like. Yeah, if I have any that, advice, awesome, guys, crazy. go for it. Like fortune favors the bold, everybody. Fortune Damn straight. The bold. So, for like, there are two times, to, the, the two times that are the best time to plant a tree 20 yeah. years ago and today. 
right? Like, That's it doesn't true. matter what Love your it. plan is, man. Plant your tree today. Start doing it. Fortune favors the bold. No, nothing's ever going to happen if you don't freaking throw your hat into yeah. the ring. Uh, you got to just go for it, you know? So I agree. Yeah, it's, it, it I'm thinking a lot about what I'm going to do. I, I'm putting a lot more work into my stuff. I, I want to do my own separate branding, too. I, Absolutely, dude. And I was like, you know, I, I have the time to do it now while I'm pretty much on my own still for the most part. So I'm also just doing it now. I have the opportunity to do it. Yeah, man, do it. Yeah. And there, that's the thing. Is like worst case scenario is you learn an awful lot along the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're gonna be the the there's the downside of it is is that maybe the thing you were trying for didn't work out, but then you learned so much along the way that you might have discovered something else you can try. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Just for, go for, for it. For me, the streaming is not gonna be like the monetary thing for me. I I've I've always wanted to be like uh, like an author, so I've been awesome. developing a book for a very long time. Cool. And I'm like, you know what? I should probably just get it done. <laughs> yes, dude. Send me a rough draft, man. Oh, dude. I mean... I have a lot of people that will do it. Like, mm -hmm. you know me and you know my writing. Like, I've always dabbled with poetry and short stories. See, I, I wrote a poetry book, uh, like, almost ten years ago. Cool. Uh, and, it was, and it was all stuff when I wrote as an angsty teenager. And I just turned it into, like, a poetry book. Cool. <laughs> So I was like, you know what, I should finally get actual books down. And I've always had written down stuff and chapters and stuff like that and never put together. And I'm like, you know what, maybe I should. And I listen, I listen to people like you and other people who are like, you know what, just, just do it. Yeah. So I did. Yeah, man. And like Emma, when she's like, if you want to start streaming, just turn the PlayStation on. <laughs> yeah. God, there's so much weird. It's weird how often that advice uh, plays into like any, like so many different aspects of life, right? Like. I had this opportunity where um, uh, there's this fantastic book series called Fable Haven. I don't know if you guys have ever had the chance to read it. It's called uh, Fable Haven. <clears throat> um, but uh, it was written by a guy who lives in the same state as me, and it's like a national bestseller, right? Um, uh, and so he was doing this like book tour thing, right? Like he's a New York Times bestselling author, and he's doing these little book tours like through elementary schools. And I was an elementary school teacher at the time, right? So they were like, oh, Will's got a deep voice. Like, have Will announce the this guy, <laughs> right? Like, or whatever, right? So um, I'm like, oh, all right. Uh, so they, so I got this awesome opportunity to stand next to a guy who wrote books that I really love, right? And I had like 15 minutes of just standing next to him while, you know, the minutia of an assembly is going on, right? <clears throat> and, um, and I just turned to him and I was like, look, dude, I know you probably get asked this all the time, but here's the deal. I really like your work. I really respect you as an artist. And I would really like to know, like, how do you get to where you are, right? Like, what's the difference between somebody who wants to be where you are and, and somebody who is where you are? And he was just like, look, man, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Just write a book. Like, stop thinking about writing a book yeah. and write the book. He's like, the, what I did was, he said, what I did was, I, uh, his name's Brandon Mull. Um, he wrote this book series called Fable Haven and, and The Beyonders and Candy Shop Wars. He's got a lot of really great stuff. But um, he said, what I did was, he said, I took some time off um, and uh, he had the, it was kind of like my summer vacation situation, similar to it, where he was just like, I treated it like a full-time job. I woke up in the morning at a reasonable hour. I got myself ready for the day. I went into my writing room. I sat down in front of a computer and I forced myself to write for eight hours. I took a lunch break, but I forced myself to write for eight hours. And then I did that for, you know, this amount of time. He's like, in three months, I wrote my first book. And it wasn't perfect, wow. you know, it still had to write. He's like, I, I said, you know, I, I still had to put it through an editor and all these different things, you know, and all this different stuff. He's like, but if I hadn't have done that, if I hadn't have taken it seriously and just done it, then I would still be, you know, sitting around thinking about this book that I want to write. Right. So it does, yeah. it does come down to, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not the poster boy for this in any way, shape or form. There's a million <laughs> aspects of my life that I need to, sure. I need to like practice my own preaching here, but like, when it comes right down to it, you have to do the thing that you want to do. You have to be brave enough to give it a try. You have to be brave enough to fail. You have to be brave enough to just go for it and to actually yeah. really, really take it seriously <laughs> and work on it. And <laughs> when you do that, you'll be surprised at the benefits that come. You may not, the dream that you originally started out with may not be the dream that you accomplish, right? You might find something else along the way that ends up branching or whatever. But at the end of it all, you'll at least be able to say, I went for it, I did it, I tried. 
and this is the result that I had, right? Because there's so many aspects of life where there are incredibly capable people who, who don't believe in themselves enough to go for it mm. um, and just sit back being, being, having to be content with the status quo when there are a lot of people out there who might not even be remotely qualified for the thing that they're currently doing, but they're the ones who are doing it because they're the ones who are brave or stupid enough to try. Weather right? people. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, they're the ones who gave it a try. Like, they're, well like, said. Very well there's said. There's so many things. You know, like, there's a guy I went to high school with who I wouldn't trust with a lawnmower, right? <laughs> but but he, own, he owns and operates a successful smoothie shop in my town now because he just did it. You know what I mean? He, it's not like he's... That's the thing. Maybe I underestimated him or whatever. You know what I mean? But the thing is, is, like, uh, he just went for it. He's the guy who wasn't afraid to go and get the loan or he wasn't afraid to, you know, to try. And so because he tried, he's now the one who owns the smoothie shop. You know what I mean? And so that's yeah. the thing. That's 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 asp that's life that right there. That's if anything, if there's any piece of old man wisdom that I can give to it's that f it really is fortune favors the bold. Like do it. You know, you just go for it. Just give it the best try you can. If and you want like, to hear uh, this definitely go to the space captain spaces channel because he's always got daddy sleep time <laughs> to go along with his humor <laughs> pull up your I'm, pull up your blankets because it's, I mean, it's story time right i'm gonna story drop story some old daddy. man wisdom on you <laughs> i mean mike if you think about it i i started a big journey in my life that's true and how's that going for you dev so far so good yeah that's good man I, it's not always going to be easy, bro. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Like, usually it's really, really hard. Well, But it doesn't mean, you know what I mean? I've always, you know, suffered with weight issues being mm -hmm. on the heavier side to where right now I am sitting at about 450 pounds. Mm -hmm. And a little over, just about a year and a half ago, I got news that you know i was gonna be an uncle and my nephew just turned one march 20th and i started on the journey to get weight loss surgery so yeah, um, that's it, great dev awesome with your with your movement like you just feel better like weight is like people people don't realize they the amount of weight weight you put on your knees is like literally five to ten pounds per extra pound you put on yourself. Yeah. Like, wow. So. Yeah, yeah, your knee your knees are durable, but not that durable. You know, like it's. Uh, I had to drop quite a bit too from high school because like I also got injured quite a bit too, so it didn't help. I I kind of exacerbated it from rugby and wrestling, so I had to like, really change how I was approaching things. I had, I couldn't do forestry. Which is what I have a diploma in. I had to switch everything up in my life and just went all in on and cooking. And that's what you have to do sometimes, you know. It's yeah, not always easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's always the one you end up staying on. Right. Like space was a teacher, not <laughs> you decide, you know what, I wanna go all in on this one thing. And yeah. You know. It's crazy. And the thing is is like, um, don't lose sight of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh I would say don't lose sight of your goal because that's 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 a thing that gets you know, I don't know. People always think that, like, the line to success is this, like, you know, progressive line. Like, I started here, and then I worked real hard, and I got there, right? But no. it's more like you go up like this, and then you go down. Like, further down than you started, right? And then you slowly come back up, and then you go, and then there's a bunch of jagged things here. And then there's a big spike up, and then there's a big spike down, and then there's a this. It's a and heartbeat. And finally end up over here. You know what I mean? Like, don't, it's, don't get It's a heartbeat. Yeah, it, it is. And it, don't get discouraged that it's not like a, a constant progression towards perfection. There are going to be there are going to be valleys in that. Right. And so you got to keep on forcing it through. Like, I mean, I don't know, like COVID just shot me out of the complete sky and we ended up lower than, you know, than when we're when we started, you know, and it's like you just got to keep on going. And I'm proud of you, man. That's a really good goal. That's a really cool thing. That's one of those things that's like. Um, great, it, it really yeah. is going to make your life better. It's going to improve your life and the life of the of like the people who care about you. And you'll feel you more know? confident. I mean, and yeah. you'll show oh, in your it, content. It's only going to improve your life. That's the only thing that's going to come about from yeah. it. And that's that's the thing too. Is it's like uh, I'll, I'll I'll do another like pearl of old man wisdom. My my um my sister. Sure. I have a twin sister who's a physical therapist, right? 
um, she is highly intelligent. She's she's an analytical, highly logical, intelligent person. She is literally the Spock to my Captain Kirk, right? My this that's the only way I can explain it. Is that's that great. she's the Spock <laughs> and I'm the Captain Kirk, right? But um, uh, she's a physical therapist, and the way she explained like uh, health to me, right? Because I'm like dad botting out in a big way, um, which is you know that's life. But like uh, um, the way she explained it to me was, as she said. Um, when you're young, you care about going to the gym and stuff because you want to like look hot and look sexy and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But like, uh, uh, what the, the the correct mindset is like basically saying, when I'm at a certain age in my life, I want to be able to like still take care of myself, right? Like, I want to be able to put like I want to be able to put my own shoes on, and I want to be able to. Uh, do all of these things like I don't want to like w like my kids. knees to be destroyed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. like where do you want to be? Like when you're 60, like what kind of a 60 year old do you want to be? Right? Do you want to be one of the ones yeah. that can still travel, or do you want to be one of the ones that, you know? And it's like that's the that's that hit me with this big bolt of reality where I'm like, oh wow, you know, I need to. That's my motivation to be healthy. Is it's like, you know, it's not always about like being sexy and accepted or whatever. It's mostly about like I want to continue do, living do it for yourself you know do yeah i want to continue good. living and be healthy yeah. and, and and like be able to like uh, handle things and all that stuff you know so it's always a really it's a really good thing and dude i believe in you i believe in you you can do it you can totally do it i'm proud of you that's awesome uh, that's I'll, great, I'll, that, that's i will hard. i will i will put it this way up until i found out that news i my state of mind was pretty much I didn't care if I made it to 50. You know? Mm -hmm. I I used to crack jokes all the time where I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be dead by the time I hit 40. Mm -hmm. and, and now, now, like, you know now it's like I, I actually have a reason. Mm. And that's yeah. important. Yeah, that's important. I'm happy for you. That's good. That's there's the thing. A, it's like a lot a, of people care about you, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of people who care about you. And that's the thing is, like, it, like respecting yourself in that regard mm -hmm. um, also, like, respects them, right? Like, because you want, like, if you care about people and they care about you, then you're going to want to, like, help them keep you. <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah, they want to exactly. keep you around you want to help them keep you right like people don't want to see you go so it's like well i guess i better do something about that right that's yeah. really cool it, it reminds cool me of this goal. uh this musician slash podcaster <clears throat> he he goes by billy the fridge and he mm. called himself that because he's five eight and 700 pounds uh and then one day he's like you know what man i want to be able to like live till like I'm, i want to be 40 years old and be able to live and now he's like, I'm Billy the the water cooler now. He, diet. he lost like 200 plus pounds. And stuff. That's awesome. And it's like, it's but it's hard. You have to like go in on it, it. It's like anything you do. It's like when you're doing your game developing, writing a book. You have to go all yeah. in, or it's never gonna work. Yeah, yeah, you're man. never gonna get it done. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's that's the thing too. Is like, uh... have a good night, Sally. Thanks for coming by. Oh, hey, is oh, Sally there? Later, hey, Sally. Sally. Let's see here. A roadblock in my life honestly could be a new start, Sally. You can do it. Sally's yeah. amazing. There's nothing Sally can't do. Oh, yeah. No, you. I'm night, Sally. honestly it's like, seeing you. honestly, she's supposed to be uh, sending out this handmade rabbit that she made for me. Oh, and wow. I am nice. so freaking pumped for it. That's way cool. That's way, way yeah. cool. It, so how much, um, how much longer do we have you for, Space? You know what? I could probably go about another 20 minutes if that's all right. Yeah, that's I got right. more yeah. questions with you. Okay, cool. Well, here, let me, let me do a, before we finish that, I, I just wanted sure. to do... I'm just gonna throw out. I'm just vomiting my brain all over you guys. I apologize for that. No, that's okay. absolutely okay. You know what? As long as it's you your brain and good ideas and not stomach acid, <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> you got it. I'll try my best, man. Um, so uh, there, there's a, there's an aspect of my, of my friends who are my coworkers that, um, that blows my mind that I'm trying to acquire. I'm trying to assimilate this, this personality trait, right? Um, they are. Uh, they are a tenacious to a fault, right? Like they, they get an idea or they get a goal in their head. They get passionate about something and it becomes their entire life, right? Like, for example, my, my friend Nick, um, 
who who really is like a big part of the artistic and, and creative genius behind orbitals um he uh he decided about five years ago he decided that he wanted to be an artist right and so he started drawing and then he started watching drawing tutorials <coughs> on youtube and then he started picking buying books and he started doing all these things and he 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 did nothing but that like almost to a fault where it's like dude you need to probably start paying attention to like you know some pretty important life elements of your own of your life right. other than this right but he just went for it and he now he's an artist you know a few years go by and now all of a sudden he's an incredible artist right and it's because he 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 lives it right and there's this um like when you have a goal in your mind when you want to do something like choose to do it and like really take yeah. it seriously right like don't like like uh don't just hope upon a hope and be like don't just harbor that little ember of of joy in your heart of being like yeah it'd be really great if i accomplished that you need to make that like that you need to make that your the thing Absolutely. you think about when you wake up in the morning right yeah. and that's and that's that creates a lifestyle change that creates a change in your lifestyle right which is really what you need if you really want to make something happen if you really want something to change in your life then you need to change your lifestyle right and so anyway there's this this is dumb lyric that i used to send to them all the time because it always reminded me of them but there's a song called i think it's called sweatpants by childish gambino oh and God. there's a line in it there's a line in it where he says um this says um he says uh breakfast lunch and dinner is for beginners you don't even know and he says yeah you've got the silverware but really are you eating though and i like for some reason that like got in my head right like breakfast lunch and dinner it's like people are like man this is breakfast lunch and dinner for me it's like that might not be enough <laughs> you know what i mean like if you you gotta like make it a key element of your life at that point right like and don't ignore the important stuff of your life but make it really important to you right and like it kind of the the you've got silverware it's like people people will go out like streaming for example people will go out and buy you know the stream deck and the pedals and the lights and the cameras and the and the the green screen and all that stuff and they'll have all the equipment they have all the utensils but are they eating you know like and yeah. then they'll just never stream then they then they'll stream you know maybe once every six months or whatever because it's just it's it's easy to like hope and to hold that little hope and not actually put the work in right yeah I, and I so get it. and yeah. so uh you know you might have the silverware but are you eating right and like breakfast lunch and dinner is it might not be enough you need to breathe this stuff you know what i mean so when it comes to a goal of like um like don't let it don't let it be something that can be uh destroyed by uh one negative thing happening along the way don't let it like yeah. when you hit a road bump don't let it completely break your break your goal you know what i mean you it needs to be something that like you is a battering ram that like anything yeah. that gets in your way you run it over right like when the, I, I, when the road bumps pop up you're smashing through the road bumps yeah. and and you know and so that's a that's a key element to it as well is it like don't just let your dreams be dreams like you actually have to yeah. cut the steak and eat it you know what i mean <laughs> yeah anyway anyway uh, that's uh, just that's just i'm just throwing that out there you know like, what i mean go for it like when I, don't when I, when, I, when I had to pivot before as a park ranger to cooking i worked really hard on it to be the like the best i could possibly be at it and it was a detriment at some points so i had to take a step back and be like you know what i'm pushing it too much i'm burning out i yeah. I, I but i changed it to the point where it's like I'm still living and breathing it, but I have to get back and look at the other things that I'm doing. Right, you got to um, maintain the my machine. My mind is constantly moving. I'm always doing different things. I have a mm -hmm. thousand different things on the go all the time. Mm -hmm. But I got to be able to focus and and still live and breathe the way I want to do it, mm -hmm. but not have it take away everything else in my life because I pushed a lot of very people true. away. Yeah, very very um, true. I never very, really true. had. I, I, I think my entire 20s, I didn't really have a real relationship because I was a workaholic about this cooking. Oh, wow. And doing it and being Oof. a thing. And, yeah, that can be and hard. And I, I was spending like four or five, six months at camp to do cooking and stuff like that. So I never really spent time doing it for a long time. Putting I, any roots into your life, right? Putting some yeah. roots down. And when I uh, settled down finally, it was just before COVID, luckily for me. So it kind of forced me to stay home. 
Um, and I was like, you know what? I, I, I'm lucky to have this position that I have now because I was able to settle down and pick somewhere to go because now I've built my career enough that I can pick and choose where I want to go. Oh, that's do awesome. Whatever I want. Yeah, that's awesome. And I can still live and breathe it, but now I can live my personal life and I can have this and I can work, these, work on this kind of project here. Right, yeah, which I've is great. I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted yeah, to yeah. be a guy that yeah. talks to people. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. So, people have to realize like even if you live and breathe it don't make it don't let it consume you forever oh yeah no N never let it like take over the it, so that's the thing you know preserve the preserve the important things don't let it alienate family don't let it alienate friendships don't let it uh and I, and, and don't I let it steal your mental time. health and emotional health you know what i mean like like It'll keep it within book, bounds yeah so take it seriously <laughs> but don't yeah. let it don't let it break the sacred barriers of you know what's really important in life right because like well, nobody gets to their deathbed and it's like man i wish i would have put another 12 hours of work in you know what I yeah mean? Like, no, nobody oh, gets there i wish i retired sooner is usually the yeah, thing <laughs> yeah exactly uh for yeah. me it's like yeah like but but if i didn't live that i also wouldn't have the, the same inspiration to do the book so to speak. at the same time it's like right. at least i learned enough yeah, healthy to cut balance myself off. yeah yeah healthy balance in all things there's gaming devil now that, i guess she's awake now hey devil hey devil <laughs> she's fantastic uh so i guess we'll go into a couple of questions that we may have since we have you for a little longer oh yeah yeah if, yeah if you were to pick a, a world to live in in the world of gaming what game would you want to live in Oh man, you asking the good questions now. <laughs> I saved because th this one's always a good one, especially for someone like you who has oh, such yeah. a, a great mind for it. I was gonna say definitely. Mm. Wow. You know what? I feel like I'm gonna end up saying something, and then three hours from now, I'm gonna be beating myself up over saying something <laughs> that I should have thought more about. You know what I mean? But let's see yeah. here. I, uh, what world would I choose to live in? Golly. Orbitals. <laughs> yeah. no, oh, man, you don't want to live, live in your I was going to say. It's, yeah, it's, it's not a happy place You're to live. You're constantly attacked. <laughs> it's not a happy place to live. See, because that's the thing. I love questions like this because you really need to think about them and answer them correctly. Yeah. It's, like, people, it's like I love asking the question of, like, if you could have a superpower, right? Like, what superpower would you choose, right? And people are always like, oh, man, I'd choose Wolverine or I'd choose, like, you know, this or that. And it's like, yeah, but, but here's the thing, though, like, how often in your normal, in your current life, do you really <laughs> need those powers? You know what I mean? How Why often do you would they actually improve your? Yeah, how would they actually Wolverine. improve your life? It's like, sure, I'd like healing ability. That'd be fantastic because then you could live a really long time and not have to worry about injuries. But I don't generally need knives coming out of me, right? Or like making fire. I don't and, want to make and fire. And it hurts him every time he takes yeah, the plasma. Yeah, I don't want to make fire. Like, so it'd be like teleporting sounds pretty great because you can just travel wherever yep. you want to go. Telekinesis lift things up. You know what I mean? So it always comes down to, like, practicality. Well, like, see, you, like, you don't really need to shoot lasers out of your eyes. See, Never here in my you go. life. See, I thought my life would be better if I blasted lasers out of my eyes, right? Here, here uh, you go. Here you go, go Captain. Ahead, yeah. if, if I could have... I've, all, I've thought about that question many, many times. And in honesty, if I had my choice, it'd be teleportation and size manipulation. Size manipulation. Uh huh. So Interesting. You just become skinny instantly. Well, I was talking more about my height, like Ant Man. You like grow uh, like like giant man, and I like shrink down like Ant Man. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, like Ant Man. You know. Mm. Be like Kamala Harris, Miss Marvel. Yeah. Be like. A that's cool. That's cool. I get that. I said mine has always been a battle between teleportation, like you said, because it's just be amazing if you could just be like, oh, pop over to Paris and buy a baguette, you know, buy no, a croissant. Fuck that. Pop over I want to, some. I want some Berlin. Mike's. Yeah. I want some of Mike's cookies. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just have them. You just pop in and be like, hey, Mike, how's it going, man? Pop, or better yet, pop, pop, up, to, pop up to Yeti. Yeah. Yeah. You would have I think I would choose telekinesis. Oh, yeah. Because if you have telekinesis, you've got it all. You can pick yourself up and fly. True. You, know what I mean? you can create vision. barriers around yourself that bullets can't you... pass through or whatever. If you get in a car accident, you're just surrounded by a shield of, of like push energy. Yeah, but if I'm using telekinesis to fly, I'm, I'm not driving. That's true. 
absolutely right. Like, absolutely right. Because I think you could, that's the thing is like, you, if you can lift anything with your mind, that's super strength too. You know what I mean? True. Lift anything you want with it. You know what I mean? Anyway. But so, the question so would become, see. would the strength of your telekinesis and <laughs> the size of things you lift come with more focus and mm -hmm. intelligence and whatnot? Mm-hmm. Like, what are the drawbacks, right? What are the requirements? Exactly. Right? True. Mm. Yeah. Because people are always like, what if you could fly, but you could only fly as fast as you can run? Would you still want to fly? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not really, because I can't run that fast. <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd be more like a chicken oh. where I could glide a little bit and land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trying to think, what world would I choose to live Cause in? Because for me, it'd be like, it's like peaceful and all you're doing is farming and making money off putting random stuff in a bin and like it's just a peaceful existence and you don't have to go in the village ever if you don't want to oh my gosh you, you just know what live out there see because here's the thing like i'm trying to think like in my head what worlds have i lived in for the longest you know because like i've spent a lot of hours in stardew valley <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like if I could choose, apparently, apparently, I really like Stardew Valley. You know what I mean? Where it's yeah. like, I, I can control my environment. I can grow what I want to grow. I can gain wealth from it. I can build relationships with the locals. You know, I like peaceful lifestyle. So yeah. I think like, uh, man, I don't know. Let me think. Golly. I really like. Uh, it, it is a tough one. It's a tough one, man. That's a really tough one. Because like, I think, all right. Like, Someone said Pokemon, and I'm like, no, you wouldn't, because that shit's scary. It could be, you know, it could be. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you an easy one. Let's see. Star yeah. Trek or Star Wars? Oh. Wait, like, am I when you say Star Trek or Star Wars, am I? Are you saying like which, which one would is I your choose? preference? Which like, preference? are you a, are you a Trekkie? Mm. Or do you go Star Wars? I. Okay, so. I have to say that I am Star Wars over Star Trek. Okay. Um, nice. I am a Star Wars guy over Star Trek, though I have seen every single episode of the Star Trek The Next Generation multiple I've times. I've been watching that, too, and I'm right. like, I love the show. Um, <laughs> so I love Star Trek. I love Star Trek. But I love Star Wars more. Um, yeah, I think I like and... the drama and... Of the fighting. problem is this i have to be very careful with how i start this conversation because <laughs> i could i could talk about star wars for eight hours i could teach a college course on star wars oh right like i God. like i have very strong opinions about star wars and they're not going to oh. necessarily align with probably most people's uh, opinions on star wars but i love star wars i specifically love the original trilogy of star wars a oh, new yeah. hope empire strikes back yeah Return of the jedi that's my jam. That's my Star When you say Star Wars, that's what I view as Star Wars. Are, yeah, are, you, I actually, are you like I've modern been trying fans to build this, just, uh, like, you hate you just hate new ones just because they're new? Like, well, so, so no, here's the thing. Like, uh, golly. So I got to be very careful about how I approach this because I'm no, actually wanting funny, to yeah. make like some YouTube videos about this. Like, I actually want to make YouTube videos about this to explain my thought process. But um, I, I, I'm going to be very very light in my explanation when I say sure. that the original trilogy was beautiful because it was handled by so many people um, and yet reined in by budget and it was it was this beautiful little that's perfect true. thing wrapped up in a bow and it was wonderful and that's why it was it was held in such it was regard like, it, for it was like so many years that, that right? guy put everything in one movie yeah. hope for the best Part of what made it so great is that there were really talented and creative people who were reining George Lucas in a little bit. And they also had budget restraints that were like, you just can't do that stuff, right? And so they had to get really creative to do the things that they did, right? And mm. it really was a masterpiece, right? Um, George Lucas was this like up and coming shark of a of a director, right? A and a creator. He had great ideas, he had great as aspirations, he had he knew what he wanted to do and he went for it. He was fantastic. Um after all of that settled down and he became a very comfortable old grandpa, <laughs> he decided that he wanted to make more Star Wars movies. And he didn't want to make them for 
the the world building. He didn't want to make yeah. something that built off of his old creations. He literally was just like, oh yeah, I could make more Star Wars movies if I wanted to, because they'll make a lot of money. I can merchandise the crap out of them and I'll get filthy rich, right? Prequels and so he new. made episode <laughs> one, two, and three, which, yeah. which in my opinion are awful. They're just they're awful. The, they're the worst. They're just the, awful, the right? But, the, but I have to be very careful when I say that because there's a lot of people, there's a, there's a generation of people who that was their first exposure to That's Star true. Wars. That was mine. And they fell in love with the Star Wars world through those movies, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's not my Star Wars, but it's their Star Wars, right? And, that's and so I have to respect agree. that. I agree. It's about the new generation. Right. And and so it's like, okay, so there's that Star Wars, right? Um, and in my opinion, it's a mess, but it's a lot of people <laughs> love it, right? Um, but uh, and I could talk, I could talk for six hours about yeah, why it's a like, mess. To me, to but, me, the prequel is Rogue One. That's the real prequel movie. There you go. Okay, so now Rogue One is, I don't know why, but people crap on Rogue One all the it's, time. Rogue it's, One <laughs> is Rogue One is the only modern day movie, the Star Wars movie that I feel gets to be honored by putting in the same category as Empire. That's the real Episode Three. Yes, it's so good. It's so good. Rogue One is a fantastic movie. Especially with ties the end of it's the movie. It's a Star to the Wars movie. movie. It's it's a Star Wars movie. They yeah. finally made a Star Wars movie. So it's great. Mm. Kiss it. The wonderful Star yeah. Wars movie, right? Um uh the next 3 movies uh the first one was okay. The yeah. second one was awful. The third one was a complete train wreck. And I, I don't think they really count as Star Wars. That being said, Kylo Ren is one of my favorite characters ever made yeah. in the Star Wars world. And I and love and, 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 Kylo. And I think what really hurt the new series is that they changed directors halfway through. Well, the problem so was the exactly third one, he's that. Like, I have to fix it. I, the third yeah. the guy comes back, he's like, I have to fix it. Yeah, I could talk. I got to be careful again because I could talk for six hours about this yeah. as well. But, but they, they brought in, they had a director that they trusted that I think did a great job. Uh, yeah, the with first, the first, the first movie. one was pretty, was His still pretty good. His only weakness in the first movie was um, that he was so scared of messing up that he basically just followed the same formula as A New Hope, right? That's the only yeah. flaw. But that's that's fine, because he made a lot of characters. He gave right. them a lot of background seeds, like these background ideas that could be built that's into, incredible. right? So I think if they would have just been like, okay, JJ, you're going to write three Star Wars movies, and you need to have a big arc that happens over those three movies. Go for yeah. it. I think he would have done a great job. I really think I, he would I, have I done. I think if he did all three movies, job. it would have been way better at the end. Yeah, of it. he would have done a good job. The problem is, is then they got a second director. Who had nothing. Um, who didn't even know Star Wars really. Well, he came in and he was like, "This is my chance to prove myself. This is my chance to prove myself." He makes a and, different movie. <laughs> and and he's like, "I have a completely different idea of where this should be going and yeah, the way Star Wars should be handled." Right. So then he just basically severed. He just wanted to cut his film off from the rest of them, right? Believing that he was going to have time to do so. But then when the movie got really, really hashed by critics and fans and stuff, they just went right back to JJ. When poor JJ was like, "Well, crap! Now I have to." make the world's most I feel delicious for the guy because he makes amazing pie. movies. Yeah. And so then he did the best he could and it was just he just didn't have enough. The, the right? ending like, was really good at the end, the passion at the end of it. They they had good passion and things, but just yeah. everything nothing makes any sense at all. Uh, and, I, and that's I, the problem. Adam deserves an Oscar for and that and so uh, yeah, I personally believe that Kylo Ren was the most powerful was Star Wars character uh, probably ever written in my opinion, but then they just didn't handle him well, right? Oh, and so, long yeah. story short, I am a Star Wars fanatic. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I am also a, I'm also a Star Trek fan, a big Star Trek fan, but I love Star Wars more than I love Star Trek. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't necessarily see myself. See, I'm, I'm, I'm the old school, I'm the old guy who just keeps his mouth shut now. Yeah. Because, because the problem is, is that I hold, I hold something that was from my generation close to my heart. And I don't have any right to tell people not to hold what they got close to their heart. You know what I mean? Oh, no I, doubt. I think, the, like, I think for old school Star Wars, you got Mandalorian <clears throat> now. Yes, the Mandalorian is fantastic. Yeah. The Mandalorian is fantastic. Um, yeah. Uh, and that's just what I have to hold on to. I hold on to the olden days, and then I go, mm, Star Wars. 
right? But at the same time, I have to be, so people are like, are you a Star Wars fan? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, don't you love the this? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> but I still love Star Wars and I'm glad you do too, you know? It's, so it's still, it's that's still where I'm Star at. Trek too, because like Star Trek Discovery, I think is pretty bad in comparison to the other <laughs> ones. But it's not like, it's not the, like, it's still not the worst. And I'm sure there's a generation of people that'll like it because it's for a new generation. I loved next gen so much that I can't just accept discovery, you know, See, right, I right. don't watch it. And there you go. And that's the thing is like, the problem is this, the, these, these shows last for so long. They have such a legacy yep. that like you have generations, right? Like you have generations of people who were exposed to different pieces of it. And so that's their version that they get to enjoy. That's what they see, you know? So it really just comes down to like, I'm just going to, I'm just gonna have my opinions, and I'm gonna hold them to my heart, and I'm gonna I... believe in them w of what I think makes a good Star Wars movie, and I'm just gonna let them enjoy what they enjoy, and hope that in the future people go for what I think is good. But who says what I think is good is better? It's just me. I just think that, right? So, mm. yeah. But it's hard. It's really, really hard sometimes. It's really hard. See, <laughs> I've actually made it a point to watch every episode of every Star Trek. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, that's bold, man. That's bold. <laughs> it's a lot. That it is a lot. lot of great lessons though, and a lot of it's still relevant. Like next generation still yeah. teaches things oh, yeah. and sex and that's still yeah. relevant to this day. It's next gen is fantastic, yep. man. There's so many times in my life where I like reference something that happened in a next gen yeah. episode. You know, where I think like, Oh wow, you know, this is interesting. It really got the you or thinking. The Orville about the Orville does a really good job too. I think Seth MacFarlane's such a big fan of it that he does a lot of good old elements to it. Like I've been he, wanting to watch that and I it's haven't. Good. Uh, I wanna like, watch it. One of the episodes is they actually handled transgendered issues because he gets rid of every single woman, they change the gender of all their babies if they're if they're girls. Hmm. And it becomes a trans rights episode and it's like super serious for a comedy show. But it's really hmm. McFarlane loves doing that. Yeah. He does his own thing with it, and he tips a hat to Star Trek all the time. Well, see, and that's what Star Trek was all about. Star Trek was about taking concepts and presenting them in a different way for people to think about things in a different way so that they can apply that to their current situation and go, oh, wow, maybe maybe I need to think about this a little differently instead of just yeah. <laughs> carrying all my old whatever into it. They yeah, kind of sure. present it in a way that's like, oh, yeah, let's... You know, let's talk about racism, but we're not talking about race. We're talking about a robot. Like we're things like this. What makes cell phone? a living creature? Yeah. Wouldn't exist without Star Trek. Yeah, it wouldn't exist. Yeah, the yeah. guy who made the first cell phone said that he built it because he wanted to build a communicator. Or like things like even like interracial stuff came from the first Star Trek series. Mm -hmm. They were the mm -hmm. first. It was, they one. was, the it was a big pioneering movement. Yeah. It's cool. So I tip my hat to Star Trek. I'm a huge. Yeah. I'm a big Star Trek fan. Well, what they I, I reference Star Trek a lot. In fact, I feel like I probably talk about Star Trek more than I end up talking about Star Wars, but that's just out of, like, a fear of yeah. stepping think, on think, people at this I point. I think part well, of Star Wars is more of an action film. I was going to say, well, I was gonna say about Star it, Trek sure. has more situations that are relatable to real yeah. world. Star than... Wars is not really that relatable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, how, it's how... It's not relatable the same way. It's great. But again, how relatable is it to just hear? Yeah. So I think that was our. I think that was. Was that twenty more minutes there? I got lost the time. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting a little bit close. I'm getting a little. I could maybe do All one right. more question or something. I don't know. I don't know. Right, well, and I still haven't answered your question around. about which world I would live in. That's it was the a hard thing. one. I feel dumb about it. Um, no, I, I wouldn't worry about it. It's fine. Ah <laughs> oh, man, I'm thinking like. Hmm. Golly, I think I probably I might choose the Breath of the Wild world. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. Then again, man, it's so hard. I'm gonna have to get back <laughs> to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. Probably Breath of the Wild. I think that's the thing. Is I like exploration and adventure i like yeah, me um, too. combing through things and it's uh it's approachable in a way that i think i could probably handle you know i think that's the thing too is i think i would enjoy living in hyrule you know yeah that's, that's true thing. yeah yeah so that's a simple answer 
But I think the other, the, the more complicated answer would probably be like something like Stardew Valley. I think that's the thing is like, I would, I, I like the simplicity and pureness of Stardew Valley. I like the, the peacefulness of it. And if I was going to live there and like raise kids there, I would want my kids to be like in a peaceful, safe place. And right? you could like literally pick up a piece, of, a, a piece of wood and throw it in the bin and get money off of it. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Like, okay, kids, go out and spend 15 minutes watering the garden, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. That's so, true. so basically, Mike's life. <laughs> I know, yeah, because I, I do have a lot of I do my jams and stuff like that too. That's awesome. Um, so That's awesome. I definitely would be interested in saying those out to people at some point because there's the mm -hmm. easier transport. That's super cool. That's super super cool. I I'm taking the summer to figure out my my business. I'm gonna mm. take take time to really really do it well. So. Cool man. Because hmm. baking season is really slow in the summertime anyway, so I'm gonna take my mm. time that time to reevaluate it. Do it up, man. Do it up. Yeah. That's great. I'm doing shipping now that I know it works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those cookies are uh, delicious, dude. I'm serious. I ate so many great. of those. <laughs> it's great. I, said, yeah, I, said, <laughs> I was like, well, so. I guess the diet's done for today because I'm going to eat this whole <laughs> tin. Like Boy, this whole. Who says no to free cookies? Like, yeah, you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, who <laughs> says no to free cookies? Bingo. Yeah, but I'll send you the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sugar free for you, Dev. Sure, go for it. I could try. I could try things and stuff like that. Dude, I have. Hey, I have no problem being a guinea pig. All right, I'll I'll I'll, I'll give it a shot. There you go. There you, guess, you have a diabetic yeah. option too. I there yeah exactly. I will wrap up with this then with a fun one. It might be a bit easier. Have you ever had a favorite video game crush? A favorite video game crush. Oh gosh, yeah. Okay. Hold on now. Hold on. Wait. I was gonna say. Hold on now. The wife. My channel. You know mine. The wife. The wife isn't in air shot, right? No. Yeah. It's video game. Okay. That's okay. That's one of those things when you're in a like a secure relationship, you can look each other in the face and just be like, "Who was your crush when you were like a kid?" You know what I mean? That's the funny thing. We used to joke about that. Like, I've never really had like a like a movie star crush. You know what I mean? Where people like a Hollywood actress. Keanu Reeves. That I've like been involved with or whatever i always had crushes on people like uh you know like um like oh gosh why can't i it's, of course i'm trying to i, think I had pro name. wrestlers i had trish like, stratus i love oh there you go there you go yeah right on man that's great you like a strong woman <laughs> See, that's awesome yeah no for me it was always Mine was always like soki from from avatar the last airbender or something like that you know what i mean <laughs> okay like, they're never real okay. people everyone's probably like and, and if you see on my channel it's a lot of harley quinn there you go. Don't I mind the bat oh, boner. Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What were you saying, dude? He's like, don't mind the bat boner. He's there... me. <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah. Gaming Devil has a whole folder on her soundboard dedicated to Mike. Most of Mike. it's me drooling over Harley. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yep. I love it. That's hilarious. But, uh. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I was always more of a Catwoman guy than a Harley Quinn guy. Catwoman's to be great, too. You. Honestly, but I like the Batman but I like the good. animated series Catwoman. Like, I was gonna they say try to do a live yeah, action Catwoman. It's true. never. Right. I was gonna say for me, it depended right on the Catwoman. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, see, like the uh, live the... action Harley with Margot Robbie is fine. Right, right. The thing is, is like really good too. The yeah. Is the, see, the thing is, like, man, yeah. For me, it was always like the. Uh, so, like, I think they did a really great job with the Catwoman in the um, Arkham series, like the Arkham Knight, Arkham yep. City I stuff. Agree. She was yeah. perfect, right? But the mine was the uh, the Batman the animated TV series, mm -hmm. Catwoman, right? But um, when it comes to video game crushes, uh, um. Golly, I, I had a huge crush on uh, Tifa from Final Fantasy VII. Every single person we've had. On. I know. Yeah. That's the thing. Is it's like you know that's that's a pretty straightforward one, right? Like Tifa from that's Final good, Fantasy VII uh, was like like a pretty big crush for me. Um, I also had like led the Legend of Zelda was like uh, Ocarina of Time was like the game I needed in high school, right? Like it was the one that like got me through some hard times. You know what I mean? Um, so I always had a uh, I had a crush on like several characters in that one, but it was um, I think her name is Milan. She's the she's the daughter of the 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 dairy farmer 
that you buy your horse from in Orcarina of Time. Oh, okay. She, I had a crush on her, too. <laughs> um, she was just so kind and nice, you know what I mean? True. She was so kind and genuine yep. and nice. And, yeah. <laughs> Yuri, Yang is number two waifu. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Teeth is a good one, though. I'm trying good. to go back, but I think, yeah, I think, I think if it's I were hard, to pin it's hard it down, to top that one, I think. Yeah. That's the thing too is like I never like I played Final Fantasy VII, right? Like I played it all the way through, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody's always like, oh yeah, Tifa was nice and everything, but Aerith, oh man, you fall in love. Yeah. I've never really felt it for yeah. for her. You know what I mean? Like it was always like I never understood what Cloud was thinking. You know, like, dude, you know. Tifa's everything. Like she's kind. She's she's brave. She's like supportive of him. She's there for him all the time. Like she's always there for him. She's always got his That's back. True. That's true. She's she's constant. She's never. You know what I mean? She's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's uh she's this incredible character, and everybody just kind of dismisses her because, you know, because of two obvious main reasons, right? But the thing is, is it's like there's a there's a real great personality behind Tifa behind the obvious bonuses you know what i mean so anyway, <laughs> that's, that's a fair that's a fair answer I think the, it's the obvious the we've had bonuses mm -hmm. well i'm I, a simple I, man i think I'm that a it, simple man no 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 i i just love the way you put it yeah totally I, right. the, the that was thing, beautiful yeah. thank you appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming on, Space. I, I, my I, pleasure. I'm so happy we finally had you on. Oh, my pleasure. Now, this has been fun. Now, been Space. Fun you. you guys are cool. You guys are cool. I'm just, I'm having a good time hanging out. Space. Buy his game? Oh, we're definitely going to buy his game. Thank you. Like, <laughs> I, I want. Follow him, on, follow him on Twitch. I want to, like, have, like, heads up notice of when it's going to drop so, like, I can have the money and be, like, one of the first people. You I'm got sure it. he'll drop it on his Discord. You got, I'll, I will keep you in. I will keep you in the loop. Yeah, Perfect. no worries, man. Oh. Yeah, no worries. We can't wait, space. Uh, we I appreciate that. I'm really glad to hear it. that. And <laughs> another, really hope so. another thing that we do is, we have our guest direct the raid. Oh. So if you can, give oh, us man. a target. Yeah. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, here. Let me. Uh, Just let me pull type it into. Yeah, yeah, the top. yeah, type it in the let me chat. Pull some stuff and see. And and if Let's you like here. Dev and you're sitting in the chat and if you're like say you're here for space and you like Dev, follow Dev. If yeah. You wanna, if you want to see more of me, go to the Chef Mike for what share I do. Share the love. Stuff. Dev will share it. Shout out the Chef we Mike. We all connected together. We all let's connected see. together. Okay, so let's see here. But yes. So. And next week we're gonna we're gonna we're supposed to have Yuri on. Oh, we're gonna have Pop Cat. And we're gonna have the Pop Cat on. All right, which means it's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a lot of fun too. He's already appeared a little bit with us with wrestling. He's gonna be a part of our wrestling panel too when we do those. Yep. So <laughs> come on, clips. No, it it was the weird <laughs> stare down between the Edge and Brock. <laughs> Oh my god, that's awesome. It's not, it's not one of my thirsty ones for once. No, it's, that's weird. <laughs> usually mine... It's, it's it's usually me zooming up uh, Carlin's skirt. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Up. Yeah, because it's a camera mode in Batman, and I kind of zoomed up and forgot I was streaming. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh wait. Just walked away. Is the devil clipped the music. Oh, thing. people are watching uh, me. Mike, yeah, devil and Lux, to be honest. what's your <laughs> what's your awesome. planned schedule for this week? Um, I'll be back probably towards next weekend. Um, on Saturday night, I'm probably gonna do one. Um, yeah, pretty much. Monday night, I'll be on like around midnight, maybe one o'clock, to do some Batman Arkham City, because everyone cool. likes my Batman stuff. I'll keep doing it. There's more Very girls cool. for me to be thirsty for because it's Talia Al Ghul as Catwoman. Oh, there you go, man. More <laughs> poison Ivy. There you go. <laughs> Boom. Uh, uh, so space. Who do you got? I got Epic Chris, man. I, we got to go to my boy, my boy Epic Chris. Sure. He's he's great. He's great. He's playing some Warhammer right now. Ah, uh, Chris. A great dude. Yeah. Send him on. Send send us over that way. 
we will go to that first. He is great. Um, hey, you guys, it's been a real pleasure being here with you tonight. I really you. appreciate I'm it. I've had a lot of fun on. hanging out. The time went by so fast, I couldn't yeah. believe it. I you remember know what? Maybe before I was like, drops, how am I going to talk to these guys for like two hours? I'm an idiot. They're not going to, they're going to find out how dumb I am. Uh, <laughs> no, man. I thought you were like, like probably geez. one of the most insightful guests. I was going to say, so smarter I, than I am. We, you should see our previous <laughs> episode. It's just pure chaos, usually. Oh, yeah. So. I was going to say, I think this was actually one of the most uh, well-composed episodes. Yeah. Yo, cool. Right yeah, we didn't, even, we didn't even bring up Mike and his favorite subject. No, no it's fine. <laughs> uh, so hopefully when the game drops, we'll have you back on again, Space. Yeah, yes, please. I'll come back anytime you'll have me. I really Perfect. appreciate it. Thank you for working with my schedule. Oh, no problem. Definitely. We have, we have no issues with that. All right. We'll but, uh, I'm not sure we have a problem with it. So... <laughs> Well, uh, Space, when's your next stream? Oh, man. It, that's the real question, isn't it? Uh, usually your Wednesdays, right? Yeah, usually. So I, every single Wednesday I play with my buds. Um, that's just like the dude's game night. So I always stream that. Um, I've had some... looks like my streaming uh, situation has been fixed. So I had a couple of problems a little bit later. But usually I stream like... Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays-ish kind of a thing, but so probably Wednesday is the safest bet, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. And when are you going to be back on, Dev? I'm actually going to be uh, playing some more Kirby on Tuesday about 2 p.m. Eastern. Like, nice. pr pretty much for the next couple of streams you got to get Kirby just because I cool. want to beat it. Yeah, that's great. And cool. then well, Friday... all there that. the next week. I'm gonna say, and Friday I'm gonna do go back to uh, Digimon. Great. But Mike, any parting words? Uh, what you've learned here today was actually very insightful. If you have a dream and you want to do it, there's no better time than doing it now. Go in and just do it. Get it done. If you have a good support system, you should definitely do it. I think it's what we learned today from space, and uh, we appreciate that. Yeah. Space, any final thoughts? God, just I'm really glad to have been able to hang out with you guys. Yeah, like, uh, live your dreams, guys. Like, fortune favors the bold. That's, like, it's the most important thing I've learned in life is fortune favors the bold. If you want something to happen, you got to go for it. And uh, you'd be surprised often. That's the thing. It's like people talk about with streaming. Like, I never, I never thought people would watch me. You know what I mean? And now all of a sudden people are, like... Go for it. Just give it a try. You'll be surprised how cool people are. And you people have people are. saying they want more watching you. <laughs> right, yeah. So there you uh, go. Yeah. Hey, I but never um, thought yeah, I'd make your a... dreams. Be the heroes you want to be. You know what I mean? Be the hero that you want to be. It's that now is the time, you know? And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for having me. Of course. Great. Yeah. So, we are going to go raid Epic Chris. Stick around for the raid. We appreciate you all that came out, hang, hung out. Definitely appreciate Space for being on with us tonight. You okay. are an amazing man. <laughs> Those wonderful wi tidbits of wisdom. <laughs> uh, and I guess, like I said, I will be back Tuesday with some more Kirby in the Forgotten Land. So, till then, stay happy, stay healthy. If it's legal to do so, stay high. <laughs> and uh, fortune favors the bold. What more is there to say? All right. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, good night everyone. everyone. Have a good time. Bye.